Mr. President. Senator from New Mexico. I would uh, ask unanimous consent to speak as if in morning business. Without objection. Mr. President, uh, I am truly honored to join my friend, my colleague, Senator Lujan, to recognize the life of Congressional Medal of Honor recipient and Gallup's own Staff Sergeant Hiroshi Hershey Miyamura, who passed away this past November. The state of New Mexico ordered flags to be flown at half staff in honor of one of our states and really one of our entire nation's greatest heroes. A second generation Japanese American, Hershey Miyamura first volunteered for the US Army near the end of World War II. He did so at a time when many of his fellow Japanese Americans, and that includes his future wife, were detained in American internment camps. He served in the storied 442nd Infantry Regiment, which was composed of soldiers with Japanese ancestry and became one of the most decorated units in US military history. Following the start of the Korean War in 1950, the Army recalled Miyamura, who had remained in the Army Reserves, recalled him into active duty. Now, the Korean War is often labeled the Forgotten War. And it's true that far too many Americans have forgotten the incredible sacrifices that were made by American service members who fought alongside Korean as well as United Nations allies. More than 36,000 American service members and more than 7,200 members of the Korean augmentation to the U.S. Army gave their lives to defend a free and democratic South Korea. And in the face of unthinkably harsh conditions, many service members demonstrated the very best of what it means to be an American, none more so than Hershey Miyamura. During an intense overnight firefight from April 24th to April 25th in 1951, then Corporal Miyamura ordered the men in his machine gun squad to fall back. Corporal Miyamura covered the withdrawal of his entire company from advancing enemy forces. He killed more than 50 enemy combatants in both hand-to-hand -hand combat and with his machine gun. And he sustained severe wounds and afterwards, enemy forces captured Corporal Miyamura as a prisoner of war. But not until after he had allowed all 16 of the men in his machine gun squad to safely withdraw. In later years, Hershey was most proud of the fact that each and every one of the men who were under his charge that night survived the entire Korean War and returned home to their families. After his capture, Corporal Miyamura marched hundreds of miles to a prisoner of war camp where he would endure nearly two and a half years of captivity. During this time, he served as a source of strength and comfort to many of his fellow prisoners of war as they endured terrible conditions. Nearly a month after an armistice agreement had, was reached, ending the hostilities on the Korean Peninsula, Corporal Miyamura was finally turned over to American authorities in Freedom Village. In a Living History interview conducted years later with the Congressional Medal of Honor Society, Hershey remembered what it was like to see the American flag flying again for the very first time. Hershey said, until I saw that flag, the star-spangled banner waving in the breeze, did I know that I had learned what it represents? That alone is what makes you feel so humble. It was also only after his release that Hershey learned that his actions had earned him the Congressional Medal of Honor. Upon his return to the United States, President Dwight D. Eisenhower presented Corporal Miyamura with the Medal of Honor at a ceremony at the White House. 
Hershey also received a Purple Heart, a Prisoner of War Medal, a Combat Infantryman Badge, and a Meritorious Service Medal, in addition to the service medals recognizing his service both in the Korean War as well as World War II. He achieved final ranking in the U.S. Army of Staff Sergeant. Hershey Miyamura's lifelong dedication to his country never ceased. It continued long after his decorated military service ended. After he received his honorable discharge from the Army, Hershey opened up a service station along Route 66 in his hometown of Gallup, New Mexico. He remained active in his community until his dying days, advocating for his fellow veterans and inspiring young people with lectures on patriotism, on faith, on service. It was one of the greatest honors of my public service career to work alongside Hershey to open the VA's community-based outpatient clinic in Gallup back in 2015. And in 2018, I was proud to join Hershey for a tour of the site that is now the Gallup State Veterans Cemetery. In recent years, Hershey touched the lives of countless young people in Gallup during his regular visits with students at the local high school that is named in his honor. The Miyamura High School Patriots wear the colors purple and silver in honor of Hershey's Purple Heart. And a bronze statue of Hershey in his army uniform and wearing his Medal of Honor stands at the main entrance of Hiroshi Miyamura High School. I hope that none of us will ever forget the profound example of humility, patriotism that Hershey Miyamura left to each of us as his enduring legacy. Hershey Miyamura truly embodied the best of what our nation stands for. And my thoughts are with Hershey's daughter, Kelly, his sons, Pat and Mike, his four grandchildren, and all those in New Mexico and across our great nation who are mourning his loss and honoring his memory. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President. The Senator for New Mexico. Mr. President, I'm honored to be here today with Senator Heinrich to recognize a friend, a mentor, and a true American hero. I rise today to honor and pay my respects to a great American hero and friend we recently lost. Hiroshi Hershey Mayamura was born on October 6, 1925 to Yaishi and Tori Miramora in Gallup, New Mexico. Growing up in a household with seven children, Hershey's parents left their homeland of Japan to settle in New Mexico in the hopes of creating a better life for their children. While he never thought of himself as a serious student, mom and dad hoped he would be. As a child, Hershey's mind was otherwise occupied by tales of Hopalong Cassidy riding on his steed, the larger-than-life hero who saves the day. He later remarked in life that he always liked the good guys, on and off the big screen. This is why it did not surprise anyone when Hershey's determined perseverance to join the United States Army finally became a reality. This dream became possible when the federal government created a battalion of mostly Japanese Americans during the Second World War. In a time when prejudice towards Japanese Americans was at an all-time high, Hershey remained firm in his conviction that he would serve under the flag and country his parents worked so hard to make their home, refusing to let tolerance extinguish his desire to serve our nation at the highest level. Hershey joined the Army shortly before Japan's surrender in World War II, training as a machine gunner, a job he excelled at. When the Korean War began, he was recalled to service. As a corporal, he was entrusted as a squad leader in the 2nd Battalion, 7th Infantry Regiment, 3rd Infantry Regiment. 
even in the fog of war, Hershey was focused and selfless. He never lost sight of the friends he served alongside with. His fellow Americans were at the heart of everything he did. Fighting with the bayonet secured at the end of his rifle during a nighttime ambush by the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, Hershey ordered his squadron back to safer grounds, providing first aid treatment when he could. Staying behind to cover their withdrawal, Corporal Maimura fought off over 50 enemy troops before he was badly wounded and captured. For the next 28 months, he was a prisoner of war. All the while, his wife, Terry, did not know if her husband was dead or alive. Hershey suffered tremendously during this time. It's an agony that's almost impossible to imagine, and the strength of Hershey and Terry represents the very best that we all have, the very best in each of us. On the day of his release from the prisoner of war camp, Hershey would recall that day with pristine detail. The first sight of the Star Spangled Banner blowing in the breeze, knowing that he was almost home. Returning to Gallup, New Mexico, Hershey was greeted by a beaming crowd of family and friends and military flyovers welcomed him home. For a moment he was lost, but he was never forgotten. Hershey would go on to be awarded the Medal of Honor, our nation's highest military decoration for valor, by President Dwight Eisenhower, a revered figure Hershey looked up to as a tested and admired World War II general. After the war, he worked hard in Gallup as an auto mechanic and small business owner, doing what he could to send his three kids off to college. He lived out the last days of his life just as he lived the first days of his life, as a source of joy and light. A soft-spoken and honest man, Hershey Miyamura witnessed the deepest evil and yet still chose joy. He chose to be a source of light to all who knew and loved him. Hershey continued to tell and retell his story to future generations with humility and that ever-present smile beaming ear to ear. I want to remark on the clarity and sharpness he had seemingly unfazed by the years that aged him. Talking with him and learning about his legacy of service was like being taken back to the dirt roads of South Korea alongside him. Hershey's experiences never left him. As for all the Western cowboys and the Hollywood good guys he dreamed of as a child, I think it's fair to say Hershey far surpassed them and turned himself into larger than life, a real American war hero. Hershey passed away two weeks ago. He was the second to last living Korean War Medal of Honor recipient. His legacy and impenetrable faith will live on through all of us who loved him and know him, who have the honor of continuing to share his story. And I'd encourage everyone across America to learn this story and to lift Hershey up. Hershey is survived by his sons, Mike and Pat, his daughter Kelly, his granddaughters, Megan, Marissa, and Madison, his grandson Ian, his five great-grandchildren, his sister Michikao, Susie, and CJ. Mr. President, I ask for unanimous consent to have Corporal Hiroshima Miramura's story entered into the congressional record. Without objection. May God watch over and bless his family. I thank you and I yield the floor.